All you got to do is read the book of Hebrews because the Bible is plain in the book of Hebrews. He's been here once and he's coming back. And when he comes back, it changes everything. That day when all of us as saints of God cross the threshold of eternity. But until then, it ain't over. Hebrews 9, 28, So also Christ once offered for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all those who are eagerly waiting for him. I want to know are there people in this building today that are eagerly waiting for Anybody in the house that will say with me, even so, come quickly? Can, can I just get personal? I'm so sick of hearing about the politics today. And I listen, I don't preach politics. I don't care if you're a donkey person or elephant person. That don't interest me. But I'm so sick of what we hear every time. You can't turn on the news yet. Do I, I, turn on, I turn out, I mute it. I don't want to hear it. It's a sad state of affairs. What's going on when, when, when we... Ha Help me. When we have people that are supposed to represent us, adults, act like kids, it's a sad state of affairs. And, and the, to me, it's a sign of the condition of the human heart. It's not a political party. It's not conservative or liberal. It's a condition of the heart. And if our hearts, if we listen, the Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. I'll tell you what to fix this world if people in this world get saved. Somebody ought to be helping me praise God right there. That's a good answer. You know what to fix our political problems? If our politicians that get saved, it'll fix a lot of our political problems. Come on, say amen. I'll go a step further. And when we have times in the church when people get mad at one another and act like silly little kids inside the church, it's not a good testimony. Be able to get along. Say amen. I'm through now. Hebrews 10, 37 says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come. He will come. And he will not tarry. I've, I've shared this illustration. I heard a preacher say this many, many years ago. He's one of them old time, bug eyed, red faced, fire brand preachers. He got in a big way in his preaching. He said, one of these days. Some of you ladies going to be standing in front of the sink looking out your kitchen window. Elbow deep in dishwater. And all of a sudden, you're going to be gone. There's going to be kids sitting in a classroom in the schoolhouse and somebody's going to turn around and they'll hear a pencil roll off the desk and hit the floor. And they'll turn around and there'll be a kid that was one time sitting there that ain't there anymore. One of, hey, one of these days, a mom and daddy that ain't ready is going to go to the bedroom of the child and look for the child, and the child won't be there because something done happened. Everybody, come on, somebody, help. The Bible said, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I've come to preach to you today. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. He's coming. Somebody said, well, I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, that don't matter. It don't matter if I believe it or if you believe it. It says it for you in a little while. In a little while. A little while is relative to the time period after he comes. Because <laughs> since, since, since the fathers fell asleep, how many thousands of years is that? That's a, that's a, that could range. That number could range a lot. But Peter wrote, since the fathers fell asleep, all the scoffers are going to say everything continues as it was from the beginning. But that's still just a little while when you compare 6,000 or 8,000 years to eternity. Say amen. Don't doubt it. The Bible speaks clearly about it. It's going to happen. It's not over yet. This thing ain't over yet, but it will be over. But yet we must continue. 
We've got to continue.